Hello everybody and welcome back to another video from my series called Quick Falls On in which I ramble about an episode from some Star Trek series In this video I'm going to talk a bit about the final episode of season 2 of the animated series Which of course means also the final episode of the animated series as a whole And this episode is called The Counter Clock Incident I don't know if you, the viewer, consider the animated series to be canon or not. Originally it was canon, then Gene Roddenberry decided it's not canon, then he changed his opinion and said that the first episode yesteryear is canon, but not the other episodes. But anyway, since the TV show Enterprise, later of course renamed to Star Trek Enterprise, more and more people on both sides of the cameras started to again look at the animated series as a collection of canonical stories. Why am I talking about it? Uh, well, back in the early 1960s, when Gene Roddenberry was creating the show, he named the ship the Yorktown and its captain Robert April. Then he, for a brief time, renamed uh, him to James Winter. When the shooting script of the first Star Trek pilot called The Cage was finished, uh, the name of the ship was changed to the USS Enterprise and the name of the captain was changed to Christopher Pike. When the series was picked up and Jeffrey Hunter, the actor who played Pike, decided not to come back for the series, Roddenberry has done a very bold decision. Instead of simply recasting the part with a different actor, how most of American shows would do, he has decided to move the show slightly forward in time and give the Enterprise a brand new captain, a certain gentleman called James Tiberius Kirk. When the cage was recut and became part of the two-part story uh, called The Menagerie, we were told that Chris Pike was the previous captain of the Enterprise 13 years before Kirk, but we have never heard about Robert April or James Winter until today's episode was produced. This story has um, established that Robert April was indeed the first uh, captain of the Enterprise. He actually watched the ship as it was being built. So this is why I started with the canon bit. In the case you do consider the animated series to be canon, that means that we uh, got official confirmation that Robert April did indeed exist and was the first captain of the Enterprise. The story itself begins on the bridge of everybody's favorite starship and our crew is bringing two very special passengers to Babel, Commodore April and his wife Sarah. Robert is 75 years old, which means mandatory retirement. Well, and I thought that retiring at the age of 68 was way too late, but no, apparently the future will be even more fun. And he even complains about it. I mean, I'm 36 and I would love to retire. Now, I like uh, how the story reminds uh, us on the previous episodes of the original series. First, it mentions Babel, and now we are flying around the uh, Beta Niobe supernova, which was actually created in the end of the penultimate episode of the original series. The crew has a polite chat with the Aprils. Kirk even likes Sarah's Capellan flower, which uh, lives for only a few hours and it will die soon. When suddenly Spock interrupts them, some object is flying uh, with an insane speed on a collision course with the Enterprise. The speed is about warp 36, this shows us how old this episode actually is. Later they have decided that warp 10 is the highest theoretical speed. The Enterprise quickly changes course, but they realize uh, the strange object is a small ship and it's heading into the supernova. They contact the ship and they see the captain is a young blonde woman who speaks with a strange language. Uhura using her computer recognizes that the woman is simply speaking backwards and after playing the recording backwards they find out that she asks them not to interfere with her very important mission. Kirk thinks that she wants to commit suicide by flying into the supernova and orders her ship to be slowed down by their tractor beam. But who would say it's not a good idea? Instead of slowing the woman's ship down, 
the Enterprise got pulled to the Nova 2. When they celebrate they are still alive, they find out a very strange thing. They are in an alternate universe where space is white and the stars are black and where time goes backwards too. The dead flower is suddenly blooming again and Spock calculates that if they stay in this universe long enough they will become children. The blonde woman contacts them, uh, says her name is Carla Five and offers them to come to her home to contact their scientists. They soon find out that the scientist uh, she mentioned is actually her son. Kirk is surprised that her son is older than her and that her father is a baby. It's a pity they didn't exploit this interesting idea farther. Instead of that we are told directly that they are now in an alternate universe and if two stars go supernova in the same place at the same time in both universes, which means uh, the end of life of a star in outer space and the beginning of the life of the star in their space, it creates a gateway between the two universes, so they compare two maps of the universe. Which means that they have maps of two universes. And I am actually okay with it. Because if I would complain about every scientific nonsense in this episode, this video would be two hours long. When they compare the maps they find one star. If they manage to ignite it in the correct time they would open a gateway between the universes and they could go home. Carla 5 gave them her ship and they will fly it remotely and then get dragged by it into the star. However, suddenly everybody starts to get younger. And drastically younger. It looks like they got younger by many years each second. Why? I don't get it. Did I miss something? Uh, did they explain it in some throwaway line of dialogue? If they did, I missed it. But very soon everybody on the bridge is way too young to be capable of serving. So April, now Captain April, takes command of the Enterprise. They managed to successfully get to our universe, but the crew are now all children. The end? Well, no, not really. They just say another throwaway line of dialogue that uh, they will beam them through the transporter, which still has records of their biological structure as adults, and in the next scene they are old again. Which is very cheap. Also, are you trying to tell me that uh, nobody from the 400-something strong crew is afraid to use the transporter? Does everybody use it every single day? What about um, the people who didn't use the transporter for, let's say, a year? Would the transporter make them one year younger? Well, the end is a happy ending. Or at least I think they consider it to be a happy ending. Commodore April doesn't need to retire yet. Well, to me it sounds more like a punishment. I mean, I personally would retire immediately if I had some savings which would allow it. But let's pretend it's a happy ending. Which means... this is the end. My only friend. The end. The end of the story. The end of the season. The end of the animated series. And the end of the adventures of Kirk, Spock, McCoy, Uhura, Scotty, Chekhov, Sulu and everybody else. Well, until the motion picture, but it's a story for another time. Maybe next year, in the break between season 2 and season 3 of the original series? We'll see. I don't know what to think about this episode. It has way too many scientific stupidities. But at the same time, I understand that it's a kid's show. It constantly breaks the basic rule of visual storytelling. Show, don't tell. There are way too many things which are told to us instead of shown to us. The whole beginning in which they are trying to first slow down Carla's ship 
and later actually break loose. Should be a very interesting action sequence, however, all we see is people talking on bridge for 99% of the time. There is not really enough story, I mean, they almost collide with another ship, then try to slow it down, but it brings them to a different universe, then they get out of the universe, but they're children, so they have to use the transporter trick to get old again. See? Not really that many things going on in this episode, most of it is just talk, which is another problem in this episode. Why? Well, all of the male guest roles are spoken by James Doohan, and all of the female roles are spoken by Nichelle Nichols. It is very strange to watch a scene in which you can see Carla Five, Uhura and Sarah talk on the bridge, and hearing Nichelle's voice coming out of all of their mouth. Jimmy Doohan is of course usually Scotty, but in this episode he is also Rx, he plays also Carla's son, and of course also Robert April himself. The funny thing is that Nichelle Nichols 30 years ago pretending to be old sounds exactly like Nichelle Nichols sounds today. Don't get me wrong, I love this episode, but it has way too many problems for me to give it a full 10 out of 10. This is one of the episodes uh, which I think would work uh, much better fully developed as a live action 50 minutes long story. Anyway, for those of you who want to hear a number at the end of this video, I would give this episode 8 out of 10. But because this is the final episode of the whole series, I thought I should talk a bit about the series as a whole. I have seen the complete series three times. I have seen it as a kid on TV once and I remember I hated most of the episodes. Then I have seen the complete series when it was released on DVD, which is something like 13 years ago, if I remember correctly. I remember not being a huge fan of it, so what do I think now after I forced myself to watch it as a preparation for this series of videos? Well, to be honest, most of the episodes are much better than I remember them. Some of them are on par with the best episodes of the original series. And that's a very pleasant surprise. To be honest, I think I like the show now as an adult much more than I liked it when I've seen it for the first time as a kid. Which is kind of funny because uh, under every video I find comments like it's just a kid's show. So I would assume I would love it as a kid and hate it as an adult. But uh, would I enjoy it if I wasn't a fan of the original series. That's actually a good question and I think no. This series assumes that you have seen TOS, uh, some episodes actually require you to know the original series, because they are either uh, direct sequels or at least mention things which happened in the original series episodes. Would I recommend to watch the series uh, to a person who has never seen it. Uh, well, I think that if you like the original series, you should give the animated series a try. It's out on both DVD and Blu-ray, and I think it's also on Netflix, at least in some countries. But as always, these are just my opinions, so let me know what do you think about the final episode of the animated series, and also about the animated series itself uh, down in the comment section. This is my final video in which I talk about the animated series, but you probably noticed that I already started to post videos about the second season of the original series, plus I hope I will be able to post videos about the next generation, which has its first 30th anniversary next week. And of course there is Discovery, I plan to do videos about that show too, but those will be very short, non-spoilery kind of videos. I might cover them properly when the first season is over and everybody got a chance to see it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up button and feel free to watch any of the other videos on my channel, you should see links to some playlists on screen right now. Thanks to everybody for watching and see you on my future videos. Until then, bye.